So yes, is there anyone that would like to ask a question of uh, either ourselves or any of the people represented? Yeah, I'm Phil Doran from ITM Power. How uh, we make uh, hydrogen from multiple electrolysis by a number of film stations in Ireland. Uh, I get the sense that the focus is almost exclusively on battery electric vehicles, most of fuel cell electric vehicles. Is that correct? Uh, no, so there's no exclusive focus on electric vehicles in this. This is about innovation in mobility. Um, we, uh, Dundee has achieved extraordinary things with electric vehicles and you know, any opportunity to continue and expand that is obviously very welcome, but no, there is no, um, there's no restriction on the kind of technologies and fuels that would be supported going forward. That's an excellent question. Um, <coughs> yes, so the question was, do we expect several winners in each lot, or is it a single supplier for each one? Um, we're, we're, we're really looking forward to find out what kind of proposals that we get. Um, you know, being straight down the line, the ideal project would be one where the suppliers are co-investing in it. Um, so if we can ask you to be realistic about how much money you actually need to, to achieve this in the city. Um, we also are keen to give opportunities to um, smaller organizations that might have you know, smaller opportunities that they, you know, they have a technology, they have a solution, they just need a city to test it in or maybe access to, uh, to the support that we can offer them to help them work with the, the council or other players or actors in the city or access the city's data. Um, so we're, we're interested in ideas. The, the, the money that's advertised is the total amount of money that we have against each of the, the funds. Um, having said that, we wouldn't rule out, you know, if we get an excellent quality bid that you know, meets the, the, the top whack of the funding and that's the, 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 the um, project that comes out best, then, then we'd like to support that. The procurement will be um, heavily weighted towards quality as well, so we can, we can factor in those kind of, um, those kind of opportunities. And the other thing to point out as well is that clearly not all of the projects will neatly fall into one lot, so that's something else that we'll need to, need to point out, that there will be kind of cross-cutting opportunities between different, different areas of the project. And again, that's something we'd welcome in a sort of smart city context, uh, but we would encourage you to kind of align it with the one that you think it fits best. Graham. I was going to ask that question. It's a bit of telepathy. It's a word should come up with something you think can cross lots. How would that be viewed? And obviously, it's looking at the overall total uh, allocation uh, as a flexibility. I guess if you say something that's primarily focused on lot four, but say as outcomes from lot two, uh, how, do you, how might you deal with the allocation of the, the funding available across those? Yeah, I mean, we will have to work through it, is the, the, the honest answer. Um, we don't know what bits we're going to get yet. Um, one of the things I would emphasize though is we're looking for stuff that meets a real need in the city and that has a genuine value to, to you as a company. You know, we're not looking to just do, you know, academic experimentation for the sake of it. We're looking to partner with companies that have solutions that are just looking for a city to kind of prove them in and are looking for that support to, you know, demonstrate that it works and support in scaling it up to other Scottish cities and you know around the world and you know, that's what the mill's all about that's the, the, the kind of model that we're trying to advance is to help create those economic opportunities and hopefully Dundee and Scotland will benefit from that in terms of jobs created having said that I just want to underline we, you know it's not just restricted to Scottish companies but obviously if there's a local economic impact that's a huge uh, tick in the box for, for what we're trying to achieve in the project any other questions John, I'm sure you're allowed to ask me. No, no, I just want to speak about bike share. Okay, okay, okay. Do you want to take the stage, Steve? Yes. <coughs> With zero money attached to it is bike share. Dundee is going to be a mecca for tourists in a couple of years' time. At least that's what we all hope. And I think, you know, we really need to have some bike sharing in the city. We have no bike sharing really to speak of in Dundee. There's a couple of bike hire opportunities. And I am really hoping that, like many other cities across the UK, we will have 
a bike sharing scheme that comes to us through this opportunity and says, you know, this is what we can do. Although it's got zero money against it, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, stupid enough to think that we will get it absolutely for no money, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of active travel money in Scotland at the moment. The, the government, Nicola Sturgeon, programme for government, doubled the amount of active travel money from £40 million to £8 million. Pounds. We, we're spending a lot of money on various bits of investment. That coupled with the tourists, we've got two universities here, two universities here, loads of students. Uh, I'm really hoping we have something. We're going to have an active travel hub that's been funded by European money just on the opposite side of the V&A, so between, you know, between the river and the Slessor Gardens there's going to be a, a, a sort of a public space and within that there's going to be a sort of a cafe active travel hub from where I think uh, bike hire schemes can be sort of centred and based. So there's a real opportunity, docked systems, dockless systems, I, we're open to offers and we're very happy to hear from anybody who's thinking about uh, offering that service to, to Dundee. Just, just a, a quick one, the, the red bikes that are at the train station, just are those Navigogo? They are not those, are Abellios. Uh, bike and go scheme, which is, uh, you know, I mean, I come come through the train station. I'm not sure how successful they are in terms of usage, uh, but they are they were part of the ScotRail franchise. ScotRail, when they got Abellio got the gig for ScotRail, they said they would roll out bike and go to multiple stations across Scotland. So that's where they've come about. There are some Navigogo bikes in Dundee, right? Oh, sorry, big pun. There are some Next bikes in Dundee right now that are here very temporarily as part of a Navigogo project that some of you guys might have heard about. And if you walk into town, you might pass them because they're just by the Malmaison Hotel, which is just about a two minute walk from here. But they're only here from through the winter and they'll be gone again in the spring back to Glasgow, Stirling or wherever they came from. But uh, so we don't have any ties with any bike sharing scheme at the moment we have. And we're quite interested to hear what, what's out there. John, the new space, Tatran and available for the bikes and train station as well. That's right, so we've got a brand new railway station being built across the road and tucked in behind the, uh, the railway station, which is being built by Dundee City Council, is going to be a, a brand spanking new huge bike shelter, which is half paid for by Abellio and half paid for by Dundee City Council, and that'll be another asset to have, somewhere where people can actually leave their bikes near the railway station. Is that what you mean? Tatran. Tax, I'm paying for it. Good stuff, Tax. Thank you very much. Okay. I don't, I don't catch up. Okay. Good. We we have yeah we I I love stats, but I mean we again we have very low levels of bike ownership in Dundee. I mean we've got a lot of one of the other issues that might be worth I'd love a bit of innovation about is, is storage for bikes because we've got huge numbers of tenements in Dundee, huge numbers of people who have to keep their bikes in their living room and in their hallway and in the closey and all that kind of thing. So that's a real problem that we have, that people say they don't know where to keep their bikes. So bike sharing kind of works for that, I think. Yeah, thank you. Uh, John, uh, Tom here from Herbo, the dockless bike sharing company. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of parking when it comes to the bike share scheme, uh, are you looking for the bikes to be locked around bicycle stands or are you open to the, the free floating uh, that comes with dockless? Tom, it's nice to meet you because you've sent me a few emails and your emails have your photograph on. It's very, you know, it's, it's, it's a good, good touch, that. Um, I would say I am, and we as a city are entirely open to offers. I mean, I don't, I'm not massively experienced in bikes here. I, I, I get my information from reading the local transport a day and I saw that image, for example, from China of a, the graveyard of dockless bikes. So, I mean, whether we go dockless or docked, whether we effectively allow you to leave your bikes attached to, you know, pre-existing bike stands, which are, you know, non, you know, dumb, dumb bike stands, if I can put it that way, you know, we're very open to ideas, absolutely. And although the, uh, the, the kind of the, the bike sharing thing is, is sort of, a, I wouldn't say it's an outlier, but it's, you know, it's quite a well-contained thing. Um, one of the things that we can offer through the resource that we have in the mill is to help you better understand those opportunities. So if you're looking to invest in Dundee, we can help you gain access to the, the, the users to better understand the kind of solutions that they're looking for, uh, the local businesses, um, all those kind of, all the, all the stuff that you would otherwise have to do for yourself, we will have a team of people on the ground that can help you to, to create a market for your solutions and prove that it works in Dundee and help you to scale it up across Scotland. Hey, 
sort of cheap stuff, you know, to price car park. Are you expecting people to form consortiums where they can they can find find part of the solution or the lots before they go to tender, or would you when they can't because John's brief was very much around that to travel and share transport where you can't um, cover the whole part of the lot that you can cover part of that lot. Are you expecting people to form consortiums before you go to tender or is that something that you would facilitate? Um, so I think there's, there's, there's probably space in this project for all kinds of solutions. So um, you know John himself can have a vision of what he's trying to achieve and we need to encourage people that are trying to meet those solutions. Um, John's got a huge portfolio and there's a huge portfolio across the council as well. So I think you know, uh, I wouldn't. I think there's space for all kinds of things. So we don't be put off if the you know the keyword you were listening out for today wasn't mentioned. Please don't be discouraged from bidding uh, if that's the case. Uh, Consulting would be great. That's not, so yeah, I, I, I think again, I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm restating myself too much, but we are not. It's not innovation for the sake of innovation. So the consortium makes sense because your business priority is to deliver this solution in a certain way and then you're trying to open up the market for yourself in that area and that's going to, you know, doing this in Dundee will improve the transport infrastructure and services in the city um, and lead to commercial opportunities for your business that we can have to scale up elsewhere and, and please do feel free to, to work with partners in that case but that, that's not something that we would necessarily look favourably or unfavourably on. It's, it's not something we would consider. I think the other thing is worth mentioning is the reason that we're procuring all of these lots at the same time is that we're looking to make connections between the different suppliers. So our strategy is quite simple. We're looking for a critical mass of good stuff in the city. So we're trying to prove that Dundee is a, is a place where mobility innovation can flourish. And we're trying to give businesses the best opportunity to, to prove that and to take that forward. And we think that by combining the expertise of a variety of different suppliers that we can help open up new opportunities for those partners that we'll be working with. You know, this is not a, a client supplier type relationship. We're looking to procure partners that we can co-invest in solutions with and give them that seed funding to, to make extraordinary things happen for the city um, and for Scotland as <coughs> well. Yeah, Neil Gardner from Patron, uh, Senior Partnership Manager there, and also a uh, theme lead for the Connected Tate um, City Steel. Just a question around it. Uh, one of the other slides talked about Dundee as part of the Tate Cities region. Um, in terms of the solutions that are coming up, how much is that restricted by Dundee City boundaries, which are nine miles long, three miles wide? The city obviously serves a far bigger area than yeah. that. So, in terms of you, um, Assessing uh, what to come forward, how much of the uh, external in, into and out of Bundy uh, is that taken into consideration? So I don't think I can answer this and not be slightly cryptic. <laughs> so the truth is that you know people and emissions and you know, transport don't respect municipal boundaries, and Dundee is the Dundee as a city is about hundred just under fifty thousand people, but it's you know, the main employment and uh, retail centre for a wider population of about 400,000 people. Dundee is about an hour and a half from pretty much everywhere in Scotland, you know, the main population centres in Scotland. So, strategically located in the, in the national infrastructure network, and okay, that's really, really important to the city and why Dundee is an ideal kind of test bed for a lot of these, these solutions. Um, there is a big focus on, on regional integration. There are lots of extraordinary things happening around the city steel. If anyone doesn't isn't aware of that, that's, that's Dundee, Perth, and Kinross, Angus, and North Fife as well. That's it, that's it. Um, so I would look at that more as an opportunity to easily scale up some of these things because the reality is that the, the funding for this is coming from, from Europe, the RDF, by the Scottish Cities Alliance. Um, and the match funding is coming from Dundee City Council. So it's really, really important that these, these investments are delivered for the city of Dundee. And so that's, that's, that is our main focus. And I think you're right to draw attention to the fact that there is this wide regional opportunity. And certainly we will be working very closely with, with neighbouring authorities, as well as the other six cities in Scotland, to try and scale up these opportunities going forward. John. Uh, John Nelson, University of Aberdeen. Uh, you mentioned 
November 2019. Uh, and I presume that's because of the current funding envelope that uh, extends to that period. But as you've said, I mean, this is about capacity building and going into the future. So what, it's a bit like an interview question, but so what will success for the mill look like over a five, you know, 10 year horizon? That's an excellent question. I'm very glad you asked it. Um, success is not that the funding ends and the project ends. It's the sort of infrastructure. So one of the one of the things that we would like to hear from you is what happens um, after November 2019. And what can we expect to happen after after the funding runs out? Um, the other thing that I'd like to draw attention to is the fact that November 2019 is just when we have to spend the money buying. So we are very happy to continue to support you in the city in terms of the resource and the, and the expertise and capacity that we have in the, in the Manila program team and you know, the support of the uh, WC Council and various stakeholders in the city. But we will not necessarily have any additional funding to um, offer you beyond that point. So if your project needs to run for longer to prove that it will work for your business, that's absolutely fine. Feel free to program it, but just be aware that the the investment that we can offer only extends up to November. But if your kind of sign of co-investment is that you're going to keep this going for a, a long time beyond that, then you know, that would be an absolute you know, mark of quality in terms of how we would look at the project and it would appeal to us. The other thing to point out is part of the offer around the mill, um, as I've said many times, it's not just about the money that we can give you, it's around the expertise. And the team that we have have a huge amount of expertise in accessing funding. Um, right innovation bids. Paul, who is program manager, is involved in the second transport systems catapult, who is head of innovation projects at DINIC, which I'm sure many of you know. So, Ian has an astonishing track record of, of bringing uh, big innovation projects together and, and the funding that we will provide support to do that. Same with Simon, um, who's part of the 24 million pound future city Glasgow project and has been instrumental in securing big investments into smart city type initiatives. And, and the wider thing that they've foresight beyond. Kind of office in Dundee um, is also going to help with this, as well as the excellent offices across Dundee City Council and, and um, the Sky City Alliance and the other mm -hmm. cities. So please um, recognise that part of the offer is not just the money, but also the support that we're going to offer to help make these projects more than just a kind of pilot, but into something that has a real transformative impact on the city, hopefully on your, your, your organisation, um, and creates real opportunities for, for Scotland.